Today on All Things 80s, were these almost as much fun as the toys themselves? Welcome back to All Things 80s. Now there's no question that getting a new toy was a wonderful experience back when we were kids in the 80s, but what is often overlooked are these catalogues that came with the toys. Now for me, they were almost as good as the toys themselves because at night in bed, I would sit there, or lie there I should say, studying these catalogues and imagining what I was gonna be spending my pocket money on and it was a real thrill to go through these at night and just imagine having them in my collection and having all this fun playing with these toys. Um, ultimately, I didn't really get that many of them, it has to be said, but nevertheless, poring over these was just such a great thing. And of course, pre-internet age, this was the only way of knowing what new toys were coming out or what toys were out there. And it has to be said, it's a, it's a, it's an art form that has sadly died uh, thanks to the internet. But anyway, I thought it would be nice to take a look at these in a bit closer detail and see if it brings back any memories for you. So starting with Mask. Now Mask gave us their catalogues in the form of a fold-out poster. Now this one happens to be from Wave 2. I do know that Wave 1, the poster side, was indeed a poster. This Wave 2 actually contains some puzzles and quizzes. Uh, wave 3 was in fact a two-sided calendar for 1987 and 1988, and I cannot comment on the split seconds because I do not have any of those. But this one folded out, and on the flip side, we had a bunch of quizzes, word searches, and a little maze game there. All very cool, a lot of fun for kids to play with, but I suspect most kids are more interested in this side which showed off all the products that were available. So this encompasses Waves 1 and Wave 2. So it's a really, really good selection here. And of course, there's the wonderful T-Bob and Scott Tracker that I just did a video on. Um, I'm in a reasonably good position as far as this layout is concerned. I have a lot of these. Uh, missing two or three and of course, the very important Boulder Hill playset, which I'm resigned to not owning just purely because I don't know where I would display it. Now, something that is of interest to me that I never had as a kid are these adventure packs. I did have a couple of the twin pack figures, but never an adventure pack. So that is definitely something I would be interested in. Next up, we have the catalogue that came with Ideal's Evil Knievel Stunt Cycle. So this one folds out, and on one side, we have something which is that I've never seen before. They call these the Mighty Moes. Um, never in my life have I come across these. They look like pretty standard sort of die-cast vehicles. Uh, it's a nice armoured platoon with soldiers there. We've got... Uh, fire rescue squad and the gas service station things. Pretty cool, but the main attraction is on the flip side, which showing off the Evil Knievel toys. Um, without question, this was one of the greatest toy lines ever made. And, you know, we can see here the stunt cycle, the canyon sky cycle, etc. There's the uh, scramble van with the ramp, which looks brilliant. I never had that. Uh, we've got the Skull Canyon playset, just brilliant. And there's the various uh, costumes that Evil could wear. And this is this is in fact news to me. I never knew that he could be dressed up in an Explorer costume. Well, there you have it. Very, very cool. Brilliant. And also classic 70s haircuts and pullovers there. You've got to love that. Now next up, Masters of the Universe gave us a two-for-one. So essentially this was primarily a miniature comic book, which would have been a great thing to read. Now I'm not sure because as I've mentioned many times before, 
I never had Masters of the Universe. I don't know if this is a continuation or if it's a standalone story. Uh, I'm not sure about that, but we do have an advert for Mattel's Power Devils, not familiar with those, and Shift Kickers, which was a super fast race car with stiff, stiff? <laughs> oh boy, stick shifting action. But on the back, we could see the other figures that were available. And again, this is the sort of thing that gets kids dreaming of what they want to spend their pocket money on. And if I had been collecting Masters of the Universe as a kid, I would definitely have been studying this, picking out what my next figure was going to be. And in this instance, it's telling us that in fact they're all... No, He-Man is available, but the, all these ones with the asterisk next to it are available soon. So this was how you knew what was coming prior to the internet. And finally, we have what I'm assuming is everyone's favorite, the Star Wars collections catalogs. And I can tell you, I have spent hours studying these as a kid. Now, to the best of my knowledge, there were at least two variations per line. So this one, although it's saying the Star Wars collection uh, was released or was issued with Empire Strikes Back, vehicles and play sets. So we do cover Star Wars, Empire and Jedi. So starting at the beginning with the Star Wars, this is right where things began. So on the back page, we have the beautiful die cast vehicles. And when we open up, we have the first 12, which is wonderful to see them like this. And TIE Fighter, Land Speeder, X-Wing, and of course the Kenner Death Star playset. The laser pistol, which I still maintain is the greatest ever Star Wars toy. The laser rifle could probably have been a close second if I'd had that as a kid. There's the floppy blow-up lightsabers, which we all know are not particularly cool. Um, AM radio a headset. Uh, novel idea, but honestly, as a kid, when I was of this age, I wasn't listening to the radio, but nevertheless, it's a novel idea. We have the 12-inch scale figures, and of course, the SSP vans. Absolute classic stuff here. So despite this saying Star Wars collections, this is definitely an Empire catalogue. So we have here uh, the latest wave of the Empire figures on this side and the existing figures there. So no doubt when kids got hold of this catalogue, they'd be clamouring to get hold of the latest figures. I know that I was always chasing the latest and greatest. And as a result, I did overlook some of the older figures. We've got a nice Darth Vader carry case. We've got the action figure accessories and mini rigs. So I guess this puts an end to the debate of whether or not these are mini rigs. Kenner themselves are calling them action figure accessories. They've got the sort of Hoth vehicles and creatures. And again, continuing the Hoth scene, at at. Now here, we've got some more Empire vehicles. So we've got the Dagobah, it says here, Dagobah and Bespin. Okay, I guess what they mean is this is, that's obviously Dagobah and Luke's X-Wing landed on Bespin as did Boba Fett's Slave 1. Coloring books, Play-Doh, lightsaber and the good old laser pistol. Thinking back, I'm pretty certain my laser pistol was probably branded with the Empire Strikes Back on it. And this is the, the new micro collection that obviously bombed and was soon thereafter cancelled but it all looks pretty cool. May, I may get some of these at some point. Um, I just guess the lack of articulation on the figures was a big uh, no-no for a lot of kids and I'm pretty sure I would have felt that way as well. But they certainly did put a lot of effort into making these and of course we could join the Star Wars fan club um, I'm wondering if it's got a price on this. Um, see back page for application. Um, let me see. Annual fee of five dollars. 
that's not at all bad actually and for that you were getting uh, full color empire wall poster six full color empire photos color darth vader's decal official membership card multicolored patch and a special empire pencil yeah that's not at all bad five bucks and finally we have the jedi collections and Again, as with the previous catalogue, they're showcasing the latest figures first. And so this was the first wave of Jedi. And we've got the last wave of Empire there. And there's all the other figures. So they've used the same image from the previous catalogue. This time they've got the C-3PO collector's case, Chewie's bandolier. And there's Vader's case and the collector case. So again, they are accessories and these are mini rigs, but this time we're seeing the new Jedi mini rigs and of course the speeder bike. There's Jabba's playset, the Y-Wing. This was all brand new stuff. This was this at the time was very exciting for kids. And this time we have the battle damaged TIE Fighter. So this time, so we've got the Ewok playset, but this time these, I guess, are the stuffed Ewoks. It says here, due to the secrecy of these characters in Return of the Jedi, we are unable to visually display the toy counterpart until the film release. However, there are their Ewoks right there. And it says here... You've never seen anything like it before. Coming soon, Ewok stuffed figures. They appear to be a cross between a Jawa and a Wookiee. Interesting. I'm just wondering if they showed them. Yep, right there. So there's your Ewoks. So if you were unsure of what this was, you could look to your left and see some Ewoks. Uh, rather bizarre. Uh, more colouring books, Play-Doh, etc. And again, they're still pushing the micro collection, but there are no Jedi sets, of course. And again, chance to join the fan club. That was a look at some vintage toy catalogs. and Hopefully you got as much joy from that as I did. I certainly spent hours of my childhood pouring through these catalogs and just dreaming of what I was going to buy. So anyway, thank you for watching. Special thanks going out to the patrons, Please like, please subscribe, and as always, stay tuned for more videos from All Things 80s.